The four strokes are pretty much the same mechanically, but as you well know, if you've worked on diesels or you've had any training at all on diesels, the intake strokes where we part ways between gas and diesel, you've got intake, air and fuel coming in on the gas engine and you've only got air coming in on the diesel engine. As we go from left to right, the next stroke, the compression stroke, piston moving up, making that compression double typically what a gas engine has with a diesel engine, let's say 20 to one or more, we're looking at a lack of ignition, which you would have with a gas engine. We're just compressing air at this point on a diesel engine. We're not gonna have an ignition event. So that's what's gonna make that 60 degree air, maybe up to 800, 850 degrees if we have a 450 PSI compression measurement as is not that uncommon. Then the fuel sprays or the ignition goes with a, with a gas engine and that's what differentiates the, the gas from the diesels at this point. So with the power stroke, also gas and spark ignition occurs slightly before the power stroke. With diesel, we've already had the injection, so both of them were having fuel and air expand as they burn. On the exhaust stroke, very much the same, gas versus diesel. You've got a condition where we're pushing the exhaust out, the, uh, the exhaust valve opens, piston moves up. However, this is not an obvious thing, I will pass along. I have not personally seen a diesel engine do residual or sometimes called internal EGR where we deliberately open the intake valve and then hold the exhaust valve open a little bit into the intake stroke. So right after that last exhaust stroke, we start stroke number one all over again. We remain with the exhaust valve open and draw some of that exhaust gas back into the cylinder doing in essence internal exhaust gas re recirculation, EGR. Diesel engines, all that I'm aware of, external EGR, and as you well know, if you're an advanced diesel tech, that's also a pain in the rear, or maybe you might look at the bright side, a lot of money for the shop with issues with diesel EGRs and EGR coolers. That's why we have them, uh, or that's why we have issues with them, because we still are dealing with external EGR gas engines doing, of course, the cam phasing to get you internal or uh, recirculating EGR.